small and large intestine. The small intestine is 6 meters long. It is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by a fold of peritoneum known as mesentery. So it is suspended from the posterior abdominal wall by this fold of peritoneum that is the mesentery. Mesentery is nothing but fold of peritoneum. Parts. It consists of duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum. It is the most widest part of the small intestine and it is fixed part of the small intestine. The jejunum constitutes the upper two-fifth of the mobile part of intestine, small intestine, while the ileum constitutes the lower three-fifth of the mobile part of the small intestine. So these two are suspended, whereas the duodenum is fixed. Duodenum, it is a C-shaped, it is a C-shaped organ or tube which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. It is the widest part of the small intestine. On its center, there is a opening of water which is formed by the union of pancreatic duct and common bile duct. So it opens into the second part of the duodenum. Okay. The concavity of the duodenum is related to the pancreas. Related to the pancreas. Blood supply. Okay, superior pancreatic or duodenal artery, retro pancreatic or duodenal arteries. Yes. <coughs> Jejunum and ileum. So, presence of brunous gland in the small intestine, that is the duodenum. Okay, is one of the characteristic feature of duodenum. Okay, presence of villi in larger amount and paste patches in scanty amount, that is in less amount, is the characteristic feature of jejunum. Whereas presence of villi in less amount and the paste patches in numerous amount is the characteristic feature of ileum. Blood supply. The entire small intestine is supplied by superior mesenteric artery. Venous drainage. It is drained by superior mesenteric vein. Large intestine. The parts of the large intestine are number one, cecum and appendix. Number two, colon, which constitutes ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and sigmoid colon. Number three, rectum. And the last one is anal canal. So these are the parts of large intestine. It is usually fixed. Difference between small and large intestine. The small intestine is 6 meters long. And it is narrow. And it is suspended. Except for duodenum. The large intestine is 1.5 meters long, wider, and it is mostly fixed. Presence of villi in small intestine, absence of villi in large intestine. Presence of Peyer's patches in small intestine, absence of Peyer's patches in large intestine. The large intestine contains hastrations, thenia coli and appendices epiploicae. What is hastrations? It is sac-like structure or back pouch-like structure formed by the each segment of the large intestine. Okay. So this is one hastration or sac lesion. Okay. It is absent in case of small intestine. Presence of thenia coli on the surface of the large intestine that's a linear line-like structure, stretching line-like structure, which is produced by the smooth muscle fibers, and it is known as tinea coli. Presence of appendices epiploicae. What is this appendices epiploicae? On the surface of the large intestine, okay, a small back-like structure is attached with fat. 
that wax are nothing but peritoneal pouches. So it is present on the surface of the large intestine. So presence of tinea poli, aspirations and appendices epiploidy is the characteristic feature of large intestine. It is absent in small intestine. Okay. Blood supply. The entire small intestine, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, right to third of transverse colon is supplied, supplied by superior mesenteric artery. The left one third of transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum is supplied by inferior mesenteric artery, venous drainage. Okay. The small intestine, small intestine, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and right two third of transverse colon is drained by superior appendix. It is a narrow worm like diverticulum which extends from the posterior medial aspect of the cecum. Posterior medial aspect of the cecum. This is the definition. Parts. It has a base, body and a tip. Okay. It is covered and suspended by a fold of peritoneum known as meso appendix. Okay. Situation. It is situated in the right iliac fossa. Position. The most commonest position is retro cecal position. Retro means behind, behind the cecum. So mostly it is okay like this. That is the 12 o'clock position. Retro cecal position is otherwise known as 12 o'clock position. The second commonest position of appendix is pelvic position. This is the pelvic position or 4 o'clock position. The other positions include 2 o'clock position, 3 o'clock position and 11 o'clock position. Okay. But these two are the commonest positions. Blood supply, appendicular artery, venous drainage. The veins from the appendix drains into superior mesenteric vein. Nerve supply, sympathetic. Spinal nerves arising from the T10 segment of the spinal cord. Parasympathetic vagus nerve. Applied anatomy. Appendicitis. Inflammation of appendix results in appendicitis. So there is severe pain in this condition. So how to examine the appendicitis? Okay. Initially the pain will be, pain will be in the right area fossa. Okay. But gradually it ascends. Okay. McBurney's point. What is McBurney's point? It is the midpoint between this midpoint in a line connecting the umbilicus and the anterior superior iliac spine. So tenderness at the McBurney's point. Tenderness and pain over the McBurney's point indicates appendicitis. Thank you.